So hi everyone, I'm Maxime Latulier and I want to talk uh, about working toward an economy empowering citizens with open knowledge. And uh, for that I will show you my prototype called Inventaire. So a bit of background, I'm from, I, I did uh, business studies, but then I, I, work, uh, I worked on uh, uh, the, the toxicity of marketing and I try to uh, 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 work on ways, uh, find alternatives to the current way we do marketing and the current way we, 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 uh, we get data on resources. So that's the, the fruit of my work. And since two years I started developing, so that's the, the, the first theoretical part is from my, the end of my studies and the, the prototyping is from my uh, developer uh, life. So, we have plenty on, of data on products coming from open food facts, uh, things like open corporates, uh, product open data, uh, provenance that is there, uh, source map, Greenpeace, we have, we have plenty of data on products. Uh, oh, you have Secretary also, but, uh, but, yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, advertisement is still more efficient at selling than having a good product. Um, and we are still buying our goods on the sole sellers' data and interfaces. So in the end, we have all those data, but we are still using vendors' interfaces to get to products. So there is something to be done to uh, uh, disassemble those data from vendors' interfaces. Otherwise, we are just using businesses' data, and we, 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 have, like, we, we know that businesses don't want all the data about their products to be shared, and we can't use, for example, Greenpeace, uh, Open Food Fact, and other, uh, other sources' data. So, uh, what, what are our possibilities? Uh, what, what I want to to present, yeah, yeah the, 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 my, my work is uh, under the framework of vendor relationship management. Uh, I know that some of you know it, but who doesn't know what is vendor relationship management? Everyone knows well the vendor? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So uh, vendor relationship management is the, the, the counterpart to uh, uh, customer relationship management. If you have done some marketing or things like that, you know that all businesses have a lot of software to get data on customers and analyze those customers and uh, manage their relationship with customers. That's why you're called at 12 to get sold a, a, a vacuum cleaner or something like that. It's because they, they know that they, call, they have to call you every month or something like that. So the, the thing is that uh, businesses have a lot of data on you, but on the other end, we have very little. They just give us like a, a, a piece of paper on, uh, when we buy something, and we we are we are we are supposed to to be happy with just that. <clears throat> so, what what could be a possible evolution, a desirable future to move from this asymmetric relationship? <clears throat> what what personally I would like to see is that in a, in a, in a near future we could have uh, every economic agent publishing a list of the product he has to offer as leaked open data. And we, we can think of it like uh, our, our RSS for products, like instead of blogs having uh, RSS feeds uh, for uh, blog posts, we will have the same for products. And every business will just publish the products he has to offer. And we could develop a free software lib a client to syndicate all those offers and based on the, the, the unique resource identifiers, we could uh, uh, gather data from all the, the, the sources I was talking uh, uh, at the beginning. So we would have businesses information on the resources from, the, from their uh, um, uh, stream, like the RSS thing, and we could uh, enrich all those data, enrich all those information with uh, uh, source map, uh, pro, uh, uh, open food facts, etc. Uh, et and also, uh, uh, when we buy something, instead of 
instead of having the piece of paper, we will have real data in the end. We will be sent the transaction data directly to our personal cloud. That's, that's something I, I, I totally want to see happen. And uh, yeah, what, what could be possible with those transactional data, keeping a reference to the product, uh, with the, the, to the product URI, is that we could start to, to crowdsource, like to, to gather data from those, uh, from, uh, from our use of this product and like re, uh, re-inject those data gathered from citizens to citizen-controlled uh, data so, uh, databases. And we could fight, uh, uh, for example, um, a planned obsolescence or things like that just by gathering crowdsourced uh, uh, citizens' data. So there are a lot of things possible. Uh, but there is a long way to walk uh, to get there. And uh, the, 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 the first, the first, uh, um, the first uh, uh, thing to do, and that a lot of people try to do, is to get the businesses to publish data on their products. So we could just go to businesses and say, hey, when we buy something, uh, can, uh, when, you buy, we, well, when we buy a product, can you just send the data? Or, hey, like, share your data somehow. And that could look something like that. Uh, we replace the piece of paper by just uh, a, a, a digital version of it. And with more, like, uh, 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 link data in it, which doesn't matter. It, it will be already a good start, but this is what happened. <laughs> They don't care. <laughs> they just don't want to open the data. They don't see the interest. They don't see the incentive in opening the data on their products. So we, we get to, to, to find a trick to, to escape the status quo of being solely forced to use businesses' interfaces with businesses' data in the way we find our resources. So what I am trying to do is to explore peer-to-peer -peer as... <laughs> Peer-to-peer -peer as an, an opportunity to break the status quo. We could take, uh, uh, take advantage of the collaborative economy, to, uh, uh, an upgraded version of the collaborative economy, upgraded with open knowledge and uh, linked open data, uh, and use those peer-to-peer uh, -peer experiments on data flows on transactions and uh, uh, that resource mapping uh, to already in our peers relationship, in our peers transaction, use what we expect from businesses. So we could start having tools that would uh, 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 use open knowledge, uh, your public URIs, making reference to public uh, databases, um, open data databases. And that's, that's pretty much where I, I would like to go as a, as, a, as a first step in the direction of the, the the, the digital utopia I described earlier. So here come Inventaire, and I try to make like a first step in mapping resources with open knowledge. And so for, for, for the non-French, and I, I will be curious to have your, your, your feedback on that, Inventaire in French just means inventory <laughs> for, for the translation. So it's just about having a list of resources. So yeah. In the, in, the, in the user experience I, uh, I, I try to offer, it's you do an inventory of your books, you connect with your friends and community, and uh, you see what is available in your network to give, lend, or sell. And just like to have a, a direct, so it looked like that for the moment. So here are my, the people with who I connected. And you can see all the books, and you see people giving books and uh, uh, lending books and things like that. And uh, back there, some more. So it's only books for now because, uh, as I say, it's just about making a first step in the direction of mapping resources with open knowledge. So I try to keep it doable, pragmatic. So it's books only for the moment. It's, the data comes from Wikidata, and I will talk about that more later. So it's CC0, so it's uh, public domain data. And I complete it with uh, an obscure proprietary database named Google Books, where I find complementary data on the books, uh, especially uh, ISBNs that are uh, often missing from Wikidata. 
Uh, it's uh, AGPL uh, licensed and it's, uh, the code is available on GitHub. Uh, unfortunately, it's centralized because, as I said, it's, uh, I try to do what I can to make a step in this direction. So I try to connect as many dots as possible, but I couldn't. Uh, um, the priority is to get users using interfaces, using open knowledge and, and transaction data transmission. So I, I choose to be uh, classic web centralized, waiting for people to solve the social web uh, uh, discussion, the, the solve the, the, uh, like make progress in usability for like random people with decentralized solution. Uh, and I, m meanwhile, I, I do some experience on uh, user data control, and I, I will I will tell more about that later. Uh, so very quickly, it looks like that. It's like JavaScript on the server side, JavaScript on the uh, client side, and uh, CodeGDB and Genix. But uh, yeah, come back to me if you want to discuss technology later. Uh, so yes, trying to be pragmatic and modular. Uh, I would like to see how this centralized uh, uh, application can allow uh, can 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 have bridges to indie web and to personal clouds. So as as it's, uh, I want it to be a, a, a collaborative uh, effort and a, an open uh, effort, uh, despite the fact that I control the server and, and the databases. I would like to see how it's possible for people who have their own version of this uh, uh, interface to communicate in the same way with people who are hosted. So have, having people with their data hosted somewhere, uh, uh, synchronized with the hosted person, uh, hosted people in, the, in my server. So it's a bit the, the opposite of what was said. Uh, uh, like it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it seems to be an easier way to have a, a, a centralized server collaborating to uh, data exchanges rather than trying to, as suggested earlier, to, to get data out of Facebook's or get data out of Twitter when they are not collaborating at all. So this could be a way to just have, uh, yeah, uh, make experiments. Uh, and yes, uh, the, the, the future is decentralized, but uh, I'm alone on this project so far, and I, I, I do what I can. <laughs> so if you have ideas to, uh, or to port it to a decentralized solution, please come. Um, a few words on Wikidata. As uh, there will be, a, a, I will offer, a, I will uh, offer a, a workshop on it uh, later. So Wikidata is born from Wikipedia needs to centralize, uh, to, to, to have a centralized solution. As you know, there are as many Wikidata as there are languages. So they uh, they add to uh, when, for example, you have the book article in uh, in Wikipedia, you have the livre in French. Buch in, in German, etc. So you have links to all those uh, articles. That was the way the, the uh, articles in Wikipedia were linked before. And now they just say, okay, book, uh, it's Q571, and everybody just links to this unique identifier that has no meanings. And, uh, and then it, it allows a lot of things to be possible. So here, for example, you have uh, uh, Q535, which in French is said Victor Hugo. And uh, maybe we can see the live version. Yes. Uh, and you see what, what, what happened is that the, so this page, uh, this unique identifier, allow to gather a lot of data and of identifiers in other uh, databases. Uh, here you have uh, data on the, the like profession uh, and all those are like, so you have, you have properties, so it's P, P27 and then you have uh, an entity Q142, uh, etc. So it's a graph but it's, it's, it started from a Wikipedia graph, but it's extendable and really, you know, we, we, can, we can explore more on the, on the workshop, but just briefly. So 
Um, I don't know if you see much. So it allows like queries in a in a in a. Uh, so it's it's a it's a basic API that just allows to ask, hey, what are all the p what are all the books of this entity? And I have I get all those identifiers, and so that's for the and, I, and that's when I got those. But you can also now they are more and more working on all the uh, semantic web compatibility. So they try to uh, they, there is now a, a Sparkle endpoint, and there are uh, a more and more equivalents with uh, uh, schema.org ontologies and uh, all things. So a lot to, to explore there. And where are we? Okay, and so in my application, it translates like that. Like that. I, I, get, uh, I take uh, data from Wikidata and I, I list all the books. Uh, but, uh, so Wikidata is very much focused on encyclopedic uh, entities, so that's why I had to use Google Books to complete it. And, but, and I will be really interested to find, to, to see a, a Wikidata for sub-encyclopedic things emerge. Something that will uh, be a bit like uh, those projects, so open library, open food facts, product open data, that are already existing and that are already addressing the need for data on non-encyclopedic things, uh, but for the uh, for open library and product open data, unfortunately, the uh, the, the the activity is not there, and the, the the dynamic of the project is not there. But what I hope is that with a project like Inventaire, we could bring uh, consumers of the data very close to contributors to the, those collaborative uh, databases. And that will allow maybe a more dynamic version of, of those. So yeah, I, I, I will like to, to discuss the possibility to do something like that. And yes, just a detail on why Wikidata can't just handle all this is that Wikidata can't reference all the entities in the world. There was this very interesting discussion with OpenStreetMap when uh, OpenStreetMap wanted to know if it was possible to have all the, all the streets in Wikidata and just so to have equivalences and things like that, but uh, having all the streets is was it, it, it's, it will be way too much data for just Wikidata, and it's the same for uh, a lot of things. Uh, uh, Wikidata can't just map everything. Questions? Yes.